Chess friends, welcome to the 500 IQ Chess. In this legendary match, Adolf Anderson faces Kieseritsky, this timeless clash of intellect and strategy has etched its brilliance in chess history. As they say, life makes moves we can't control, but we choose how to navigate the game, Adolf kicks things off with e4, and we see e5 in response, he boldly offers up the king's gambit with f4, creating a chink in the armor but setting up a nifty tactical shot, after the pawn capture, some players prefer to dance their knights and bishops, maybe even toss in a d4, if you begin with knight f3, your opponent might respond with g5, shaping an unconventional position, following h3. Black can follow up with knight f6, exerting pressure on your pawn, this situation can pose difficulties for you, as the knight on f6 opens up kingside possibilities, instead, the stronger move here would have been knight c3, but Adolf, he's got something else up his strategic sleeve. He leads with bishop c4, getting that bishop dancing early. Lion, on the other side of the board, decides to give a legal check with queen h4, forcing the king to step to f1, now, instead of the typical knight moves, we get a surprise move from lion, b5. Sacrificing a pawn for quick development, Adolf, though, is no amateur, he takes the pawn. Knight f6 sets its sights on the pawn, but Adolf, channeling his inner stockfish, selects the move knight f3 to challenge the black queen, queen h6 and here best move is to play d4, this move sacrifices a pawn but after queen e2, it will pin the knight, so after f5 knight c3 bishop b7, we will play d5 to block the bishop diagonal and target to the knight, game could be play like this but in our actual game. In the game, d3 and knight h5 appear on the board, lion's plan is to chase that white knight away, and that's when things get really interesting, knight g3 is looming, but lion throws a curve ball with knight to h4, rook g1 is a logical move, but this is 500 IQ chess, anything can happen. Now knight g3 isn't possible because it have no benefits there, so queen g5 knight f5, here if you try to kick out the knight with g6 then we will play h4, queen has to run then we will simply develop our another knight, knight can't be captured because of this and the position will fully in my hand since the light square and the king side will be weak. So in this position we have c6 to counter the bishop, but Anderson is a stockfish subscriber, he goes for a brilliant level again, g4. Pawn can't capture it because it's pinned and white is threatening to the knight, so black moved back his knight with a pawn target, rook g1 to protect the pawn but, he forgets about the bishop. So, what comes next? h4. Creating a mouse trap for that queen, two moves later, queen f3 shows up, targeting that pawn, how do you save the queen? If you play bishop b7, well, Adolf's ready to scoop up that piece, and the queen is on thin ice, lion decides on knight takes g4, setting up a potential fork with knight to h2, which would snatch that white queen, but here's the catch, white's pieces are ready to pounce, so it's not all roses for black, lion gets creative with knight to g8, opening an escape route for the queen. After bishop takes pawn and queen to f6, Adolf isn't playing it safe, knight c3 hits the board, and now, it's a game of wits. Lion goes bishop c5, eyeing the rook, but Adolf unveils another brilliant move, knight to d5, and there you have it, a chess battle for the ages, filled with unexpected moves and high IQ plays. In this position, playing a move as simple as queen to c6 would lead to capturing a pawn with a check, forcing the opponent's king to move, and then delivering a devastating check with bishop to c7, in this position, after the lion captures the pawn on b2, putting pressure on the rook, the optimal move for white is to play rook to e1, sacrificing the rook this leads to knight d6 check, followed by king to g8, and then bishop to e5, putting both the opponent's king and queen under simultaneous attack. But in our actual game, Adolf Hitler didn't opt for rook to e1, instead, he played bishop to d6, perhaps he considered the threat of knight taking on c7, putting the king in check, if the opponent captures the bishop, it would result in a checkmate after king to d8, followed by a checkmate in two moves, a beautiful tactical sequence indeed, indeed, black has a drawing resource in this position, after capturing the rook, if white plays king to e2. 
it's not to take the rook but to maintain the queen's control over the diagonal, after the exchange on c2 with the queen, it results in a queen check and material up, allowing black to secure a draw easily, but in our actual game, lion takes the rook, he didn't find the best move, Adolf played e5 to block the diagonal, indeed, knight takes g7 check is looming, leading to checkmate after bishop to c7, if someone were to play a suboptimal move like bishop to b7, trying to pin the knight. It would allow white to capture with the knight, leading to a sequence where knight h6 followed by knight to e6 results in checkmate in just two moves. So in this position, lion chose to capture the rook first, leading to king to e2, and the imminent threat of knight takes g7 followed by bishop to c7 checkmate. In an attempt to defend, lion played knight to a6, but this move doesn't change the situation, as Adolf responds with knight takes pawn check, leading to king to d8. What should white play now? If you find amazing queen f6 check, sacrificing the queen, then you are absolutely right, after knight takes queen, there is checkmate on bishop e7, what a 500 IQ checkmate. Creating an impressive checkmate scenario with strategic depth. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.